Hey you guys, it's Peter. And I'm back! Of course I'm back, I'm not going anywhere. Beast. Beast. <laughs> Peek boo I see you because that was such a smooth fan flip. <laughs> oh my god, I'm having so much fun. <laughs> because I'm YouTube famous now. Available in 2022, the album, Dad, AF, <clears throat> rock on gold dust, Rhiannon rings like a bell through the night, and wouldn't you love to love her, dreamers only love you when they're dreaming. A little Fleetwood Mac, Stevie Nicks uh, remix for you, how are you guys doing today? Happy Thursday. I am in a really, really good mood today, and um, once a week, my cousin Caroline comes over, and she picks me up, and takes me to doctor's appointments, and helps me run errands of things that I need to do throughout the week. My husband and my other friends have also been fantastic about that, um, but Caroline specifically comes, and we just get to spend the whole day together, and it's so much fun because we've gotten so close. If you haven't watched my video that I did with my cousin Caroline the other day, um, we did a video talking about our grandma that we had found out after my mom died that she went to prison. So we did a whole video about that. Um, since that video, we have already started diving into the Department of Corrections, the Department of Family Services. Caroline, actually, a lot of people recommended that we do our 23andMe. Um, and Caroline had already done it. It was something for me um, that I really wanted to do and I'm really a believer in it because not a believer but a believer I'm really a believer in it because if you're somebody that follows a lot of true crime the way that they are solving a lot of cases today <clears throat> is through like Ancestry and 23andMe and those kinds of sites um, because you can find second third and fourth cousins and I didn't even really understand how it worked um, even though I had like read the book like I'll Be Gone in the Dark um, by Michelle McNamara about the Golden State Killer and that's how they caught the Golden State Killer was from like a fourth cousin I believe and his DNA and things like that. Caroline actually today she pulled up her 23andMe results and she showed me and it like shows you who like if other people have done it who your closest relatives are all the way down from like second cousins to fourth cousins and it's, it's very very interesting so I'm gonna get mine done and um, it was interesting because when we were sitting at the pool our friend Tanya invited us to her pool today and so or my friend Tanya invited us well she's Tanya's everybody's friend um tanya jean applestein prettiest girl i've ever seen and we were sitting there and i said i wonder what we'll find out like if we have like the same matches of relatives and tanya goes maybe y'all aren't even cousins and i was like tanya so anyway caroline had, so we are gonna do i'm gonna do that and then we're gonna find out more results from that um and uh, several of you reached out to me and told me other sources to look into so we're doing that so there will be a follow-up video in a few weeks when we get some of that information back. But until then, we don't really want to do another video because, um, like, <laughs> we could just get on here and speculate, but what's the point? So thank you so much um, for the love and support on that video and all of the nice comments about my cousin Caroline and how pretty she is and all that kind of stuff. So I really appreciate that. Really, um, what I wanted to do today, getting on, well, so, so anyway, so Caroline came and picked me up and ran a bunch of errands and did that. And then on the way home, I was like, can we go buy crumble cookies? So I just did my crumble cookies review for my review channel. And, um, I have a list of different video ideas that I kind of keep running. Um, I've done this for a very long time. Whenever I see something come up or if I get DMs from several people, I will, um, like make a list on you know my phone and I'll be like okay so I need to like do a video about this or blah 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 whatever right so I was sitting at the pool today and I had an idea for a video that I was gonna do and then I was like you know I haven't really done like an update update video over here um it's been a couple months and I think I think it's been since May since I came back to YouTube and I talk a lot about what's going on you know um with myself on my vlog channel and my Peter Does Stuff channel, but I did want to kind of share a little bit with you guys, um, and also about like where I plan going forward on YouTube and things like that. So this won't be the most exciting video in the entire world, but I just wanted to kind of give you guys a little bit of an update. So if you have not been watching my vlog, I don't know what's wrong with you. Okay, you should be watching my vlog. 
Um, I'm vlogging every single day on my front porch and it's really interesting because I didn't really know what I would do with that channel and I have to be honest like you know when I made the decision to come back to YouTube come back to YouTube full-time I really didn't know how a lot of my channels would work like you know it was like um, I was getting a lot of comments about, you know, like, well, what's he going to do with his vlog? And I was like, I don't know what, I mean, am I going to just sit on my couch and just whatever? And so I just kind of started sitting on my front porch and every day I just like put a tripod up with my camera and I talk on my front porch and my neighbors walk by and I talk to my neighbors when they're watering their plants and things like that. And I tell stories and it's very much like my vlog has always been, but it's like kind of like this front porch um, you know, idea, which is so interesting because I've always had kind of this like front porch love anyway. And it goes all the way back from when I was a little kid to, you know, like my mom would take me over to people's houses and we would sit on the front porch and have lemonade and they would talk and, you know, they would probably drink a beer or something, but you know, like the kids would drink lemonade and we would swing on the swing and, you know, tell stories and whatever as a little kid. And it, also I can remember, you know, like, um, Oh, shoot. <laughs> Favorite movie of life, To Kill a Mockingbird, and I can't even remember it. You know, I would uh, watch To Kill a Mockingbird like every year with my mom, and I loved the front porch and, you know, uh, Atticus and Scout sitting on the front porch. And I always wanted a front porch swing. And if you've watched my vlog, you know that my mom in the apartment, apartment that I had uh, long ago, I couldn't have a porch swing, but I could have a glider. And so my mom bought me a glider, and um, I ended up giving that glider away last summer to a friend of mine that I had literally had for like 25 years. And we got two chairs for the front porch. And I love my front porch. And so it's so just calming to me. And I love that my vlog has turned into kind of like um, this just like this, I don't know, just this calming, peaceful, serene place for me. And um, I was actually telling like Caroline this today. I was like, I don't really know what I'm going to do when it starts getting cold. And I was like, but I already think that I, and she's like, well, you're borrowing trouble. <laughs> my phrase that she's using or my mom's phrase. And I was like, well, I think I can make it last until like October, early November, because it doesn't really get that cold in Indiana until then. And then I'll just pull it inside. And, and everybody's been so nice. And they're like, I love the front porch vlogs and all that kind of stuff. And the review channel, I'm starting to kind of figure it out. It's like once a week, somebody, Caroline or my husband, takes me to Crumble Cookies. So I've been able to keep up with the Crumble Cookies. Crumble Cookies has been fantastic. They've continued to reach out to me. And they've just they've asked me to do some really cool things behind the scenes. And they've just been absolutely awesome to me. And i um, still getting my fountain pops. So um, there's that. But I've kind of had to kind of figure out, you know, how to get my groove back. And I would say, especially with my drama channel, you know, it's like having been gone from YouTube for so long, I didn't really know like what things to talk about. And I hadn't really kept up with the drama, so to speak, at that, like at that time that I came back, like I didn't really know a lot of the stories or only a few stories that I had kind of kept up with. And it was just because I saw people posting on Instagram when I would get on social media, but I didn't get on social media that much. So it would be like, there's a Facebook group called Peter, uh, Peter Mons Vlogerinos based on the vlog, people in the comment sections. And they would say things in there like, Gabby Hanna did this or Trisha Paytas did this. And I wish I knew what Peter's response to this was. Or Shane Dawson made a, a video finally, you know, like I wish I knew what Peter thought about this. And I would see that. So I would kind of go and see what those people had done. But other than that, I didn't really have any idea of like what was going on because I was just kind of like out of sight, out of mind. And in all reality, I was binge watching a lot of TV shows. I was, you know, my days were spent going to doctor's appointments and things like that. And so I didn't really like know what was going on in the drama world. And when I came back, several drama channels, Rich Lux, Essen Daily, several other people kind of like reached, well, they did reach out to me and they gave me some very specific ideas of like things that, you know, that were going on and they were very nice. And I, but I felt like out of the loop. It's like the other day I made an Ace Family video, which I don't cover the Ace Family, right? But I felt like I, like I, sometimes I get in my head because I'm like, well, if I don't know everything about a topic, then I probably shouldn't talk about it, but I can have an opinion about anything, even if I don't know everything about it, right? And I'm an opinion channel. I've like, I've never 
said I was anything. I'm a gossip tea opinion channel, right? And like many of us, we can have opinions about things and I can get my opinion wrong and I can be corrected and I can correct myself in a video. So it was interesting because I got this comment on the video and it, somebody said, um, Peter Mon doing an Ace Family video when he has absolutely no clue about anything to do with the Ace Family, which isn't actually true. Like even though I've never done an Ace Family before or video before, I have like watch drama videos about them. I do know a little bit, a little bit. I do know some of what's going on with them and the scandals that they've gotten themselves into. But you know, coming back was kind of like the scary thing for my drama channel because I really didn't know what to do. And I just wanna say to everybody out there, that just accepted me with so much love and so much positivity and just was like, you know, we're so happy that you're back. I still to this day get comments on my videos and people are like, um, you know, Peter, like hearing your intro, when I say I'm back, of course I'm back, you know, hits differently now. Like it means so much when you say that and, and thank you for coming back. So many people have shared stories with me, you know, this is not just me. This is any YouTuber. This is anybody out in the real world that interacts with people or whatever, right? You don't really know the impact that you're having on people in a positive way until somebody shares that story with you. The amount of people that shared with me the positive impact that some random video that I did where I'm flipping a fan or telling something, some silly joke or singing a song or whatever, you know, like so many people shared what was going on in their lives and it was just phenomenal you know and um it just was like the coolest thing and and all of a sudden it was like like that's always kind of been the case since i've been on youtube but it was an overwhelming amount of people that opened up to me and shared their stories talked about their recovery talked about traumatic events that they had been through talked about breakups talked about moving talked about changing of careers talked about i mean people really really opened up to me the amount of letters and cards that i have received and still receive i just did a video the other day on my peter does stuff channel talking about my like birthday unboxing and i sh held a stack of cards i mean it was massive right and there were so many letters in there from you guys sharing with me things that you had gone through like that is to me the building of a kind of a community of positivity. Like I made this joke because somebody like really came for me on, um, what do you call it? On Twitter about my vlog and they called it a cult. And I was like, yeah, it's a cult. <laughs> like I made some joke about it in my vlog because it's just whatever. But it's like I get on a front porch. I don't tell, I don't, first of all, I don't force anybody to watch my vlog, okay? And there's no merch associated with it. And you don't have to buy into any ideas and you don't have to drink any Kool Aid, right? Just watch it if you want, okay? You don't have to. Most of the people don't even watch it, they just listen to it. So somebody called it a cult. And I was like, this is so funny. Like, I just get on my front porch and literally tell stories about my life, you know, from growing up and going to Saugatuck, Michigan with my dad in the summer, to playing tennis when I was a kid, to the tree house that I had behind my house, to picking up crawdads in the creek behind my house and going in the woods every day. And, you know, my girlfriends, Jesse and Katie and I, and we would, when we were kids and we would pop our gum and to poltergeist and say, come to the light, Carol Ann. And we would walk down the street and talk to the neighbor ladies and we thought we ruled that neighborhood. You know, and I just tell stories over there and, and somebody's so bitter with their life that they call that a cult. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. You want the cult, go watch The Deep End, okay, about Teal Swan. But I, um, I love the community that is able to be built, not just on my channels, but on anybody's channels. And that's sometimes why I do get frustrated with YouTubers' lack of recognition for their own audience or the people that subscribe to them, right? Or the people that have been loyal since day one. Because I literally have people that have watched every video that I have posted since my very first booktube video in 2011. And thank you for that. And thank you to the people that just subscribed to me two days ago. Thank you for you as well. And there is a whole canon of uh, videos that you can go back and watch on six channels. <laughs> but this has been the coolest thing to me, you know? And there was a lot of speculation about whether I would come back or whether I wouldn't. You know, if you had asked me seven years ago what my life would look like now as far as like a job or a career or whatever, and it's like, it's hard for me to call this a career, but it is. And, um, you know, because I had no idea of what could be possible on YouTube. 
But then as I was sitting there and I was thinking about what do I do going forward, I could, it just got dark. That's why it got dark. <laughs> this is the more serious part of the video. No, I couldn't imagine my life without YouTube. I couldn't, and there's not always good times on YouTubes, you know, <laughs> YouTubes. There's not always good time on YouTubes, but there's not always good times on YouTube. But by and large, most times are pretty joyful, are pretty grand. And um, I feel so incredibly blessed for the interaction and the building of a community that I don't really have anything to do with. It really has, and, and I can tell you the example of that is the vlogerinos that watch my vlogs, and anybody can join that group, okay? Is the vlogerinos that watch my vlogs, and it was started by people in the comment sections that were like-minded, had things in common, and one person would post something like, hey you guys, in the comment section of my vlog, I'm really going through a really hard time today. I just needed to say it out loud. And somebody underneath there would comment to that person and say, hey, I'm sending prayers and positivity. I hope things get better. And somebody else would say, I'm going through a really hard time too. Like, hey, thank you for sharing this, right? And you would see five to 10 comments listed underneath there. Those people started the Vlogerinos group, which is now people posting about children being born and having kids and yada 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 and while i'm saying this i do want to give a little shout out hold on a second today to hold on a second to eddie e he sent me a message and he said hello peter hope everything is going well so tomorrow a very important day for my girlfriend rebecca and i we are celebrating our 10 year anniversary it would mean so much if you could congratulate us and tell her how much she means to me and how much I love her. We're currently watching your video. We love them. Thank you, Peter. Enjoy the rest of your day. So to Eddie E. and his girlfriend, Rebecca, I want to say congratulations on 10 years together. That's awesome. Um, but, you know, like, this whole idea over there, and that's not just exclusive to the, the Vlogerinos group. That is on typically all of my channels. You know, unless people on the drama channel are commenting about the specific topic that I'm talking about, or time stamping. <laughs> I know I'm long winded. Look at this video. You know, I don't care about the time stamps. I really don't. And, um, you know, but unless it's like something specific, like an opinion or whatever, like there's a lot of that over there. And I get a lot of comments that people say, you have the nicest comment section of most YouTubers I go to. That doesn't say anything about me. It really doesn't. It says a, a lot more, most about the people that watch my videos. That's you, you're the community, you know? And I'm not some cult leader. I'm not the person in here that's like saying do this or do that. That's you guys, right? Wow, wow. That is so awesome that people that watch my videos feel so safe or so comfortable to comment those ways. And I really appreciate that. So of course, I wanted to come back to this. Why wouldn't I, you know? This has been something that, this has been a love affair that I have had with being able to sit down on videos. And it's so funny because in my daily life, people know like what severe social anxiety I have. And they'll say to me, you know, like, I just really don't understand. Like, I mean, you go in places with your head down and whatever, like you have a really hard time, like talking to people, like how do you get on video? Well, for me, it's always me talking to one or two people. Like I look in the cam camera and it's always like I'm talking just to one or two people out there. It's not, um, you know, like I'm talking to however many people watch my video. It doesn't feel like that to me at all. And um, yes, there was fear associated. I always think of the uh, Miranda Sings. What was the uh, haters? What was the name of the Netflix show? Haters Back Off or whatever. I loved that show. I can't believe it didn't get renewed. And um, I thought that was fantastic. And um, so anyway... But if you've watched that show at the very beginning of it, Miranda Sings, she makes a video and then she posts it, like publishes it on YouTube. If you've ever posted a YouTube video, you'll totally relate to this. And then she just sits there and watches it and waits for like the numbers to roll and like nobody watches it, right? Because, I mean, it's like nobody goes viral like that. <laughs> like, you know, even Tana Mojo didn't go viral like that on her first video. You know, it took a little bit of like people getting to know who you were. Like maybe she did go viral on her first video, but it took a while for people to know who she was. So, you know, it's like this whole interesting world and it's so cool. And like I said in a video not too long ago, I love YouTube. I really do, you know, to have this place that is this free platform that anybody can get up. And do I have complaints about it? Sure, I have complaints about YouTube from time to time, right? I think we have complaints about everything in life. And today I'm trying to live my life in a way that I look at the positives and I look at the things that I'm grateful for. I have so much to be grateful for today. Um, I did want to share with you guys before I get off of here, kind of my plan going forward for this YouTube channel. 
because I think that there are a lot of drama channels out there that are kind of trying to switch it up a little bit, okay? And I think that that's not a, a bad idea. I think part of the problem is, is that for a very long time, we've talked about the same four to five people. And this is just my opinion about this, okay? And I think we've talked about the Jeffree Stars and the Shane Dawson's and the Trisha Paytas's and the Toddy Westbrook's and uh, the James Charles and who else? The Manny's and the Laura's and the Jake Paul's. And we've talked about the same five to 10 people, right? Okay. And the reality is, either those people continue to be so problematic that we get burnt out on their problematic drama that it's like we're just bored of even hearing about it, right? Or there's really not anything new to say about it. Like somebody commented on my Trisha Paytas video that I did yesterday, and they said, and, and I thought it was an apt comment. They said, you know, Peter, I love you, but at this point, like the Trisha Paytas videos are kind of like beating a dead horse because like the things you're saying in videos you've said 5,000 times before. And I will probably continue to say those things. <laughs> Even if they always fall into, you know, if, if Trisha never hears them, I will probably continue to say them just because I feel so strongly about the things I do. And I will continue to follow those people because those are the people that are interesting to me to have an opinion about and talk about. But I also want to branch out and do other topics and talk about other things. You know, I know that there are other people that are putting together, you know, more like I know Dustin Daly is really working hard on, you know, coming up with like con quality content on his channel. And um, I can't remember this guy's last name, but Bam Magari or whatever in his conservatorship, he like did a whole video and he's doing a series around that. And please go check that out. And there's, you know, other YouTubers out there that I think are doing some fantastic work. I think that like Sloan and his videos that are so like, you know, he does all over the place. I would like to do a lot of that, but I, that's a lot of research. So I might dive into that like maybe once a week, but I still want to get on here and just kind of talk about, you know, videos that I like people that I love to talk about and the drama that happens because that for me is always what I've loved about doing this channel, which is like me getting, sitting down in the kitchen, drinking a fountain pop with my good Judy Tanya and saying, what did you think of the Real Housewives? You know? I would like to do some Real Housewives videos over here. I can't a tell you how many people ask me what I think about Jen Shaw pleading guilty, okay? And I got a lot of opinions about it. So I might do videos like that. You know, before I left from doing videos for a while, I, um, what do you call it? I uh, was doing videos on like uh, current topics that were going on in pop culture, you know? And before the accident, that's the things that I was doing. I might bring those back a little bit and I will continue to do those things. But I do wanna tell you, um, some of the topics that people have asked me to cover recently, please leave in the comment section below topics that you would like me to cover. So, Mia Soros, like I had done a video on her years ago. I don't even remember anything I said in that video. I don't even think about her. But apparently she put a video out talking about something to do with her like lying about everything. People have asked me to watch that video and do a response to that. That video is coming soon. Um, somebody asked me for some updates on some people that I did videos on the past. So I'm gonna do that. Um, Shane Dawson did his podcast interview. I have watched a little bit of it, but not the whole thing. And apparently he talked about being canceled in there. And people have asked me so many times to respond to that. So that video is coming soon. And then in the last 24 hours, I've gotten tons and tons and tons of DMs from people asking me to cover Gabby Hanna entering contests, singing contests, and supposedly buying likes on TikTok, which I don't know anything about. So I'm gonna look into those things. I also have about five other topics on here um, that I am going to cover. I also need to say, just because I have come back onto YouTube since I think it was like May 18th or 20th that I came back, and I have really, really pushed myself to, and, I, and people have been so nice about it. They've been like, Peter, rest, relax. But I'm the kind of person that like, if I film videos, I'm ready to film six. If I get up and I say I'm gonna film videos and clean the kitchen and do this and do that, blah, 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 blah whatever, like I'm gonna do it all. And um, you know, it's been recommended to me by a lot of people that I need to slow that down a little bit. So if I need to take a day off and not post any videos, including my vlog, I'm probably gonna do that. Um, one of the things I haven't talked about, I don't think I've talked about it on here, but I've talked about it on my vlog at length, is I'm going to regular neurological checkups and also consulting with a neurosurgeon. And as a result of the accident, I have fluid on my brain. Um, I think I did talk about this in my video when I talked about um, coming back from the accident. And they have continued to check it with CAT scans. At first it was every two weeks, then it went to a month out. And then one that I had, I think it was in May or the beginning of June, um, it actually got worse. And so they like lengthened it and they were looking at me having to possibly have an operation to have the fluid removed in my brain. And well, it's between my brain and um, 
the it's <laughs> anyway I don't really understand a lot about it but um, it's and it's different on both sides of my brain but it is now mildly gone down and so they're just watching that closely um, th there's a lot of things I can't do as a result of that um, one of which is that I can't travel I can't like fly an airplane and things like that because they're uh, worried about the pressure and they're just watching that closely and um, it doesn't really affect me on a day-to-day -day basis like I don't feel anything and, and that's the thing that they're watching for is because I don't have any symptoms related to it and symptoms are uh, memory loss trouble with balance and severe headaches and I don't have any of those things so they're watching the fluid levels and just kind of monitoring it slowly um, and that's kind of where I'm at with all of that kind of stuff and just trying to continue to heal. I'm going to have to, um, uh, just kind of take it slowly, I think, because I really pushed myself last week. And if you watch my Peter Does Stuff videos or if you watch my vlog, like I had like a two day period or a day period where I woke up and I just was really sad. And I think part of it is I had therapy <laughs> twice this week. I'm still going to therapy. Um, it's pretty typically twice a week. And um, I had this... I just feel like I didn't like really grieve the loss of my dog. I have focused so much on the accident and you know just all that's happened as a result of that and my feelings and my emotions and everything associated with it that I think that there are some things that I have like let go and one of the things is that I think I just like pushed I don't like the saying move on with life. I don't like that. I believe that we move through and um, you know, we always forever will carry some amount of pain with us depending on the situation or the grieving process of whatever happens. Right. And um, I think that there's a lot of things that I just moved on from instead of really moving through and addressing the pain. And that's one of the things that I'm working with my therapist on right now is really taking a look at those things and um, really taking a look at, uh, and, and my therapist, let me just tell you, he is fantastic and we're also seeing him for marriage counseling as well and um my husband has been so supportive through you know just everything right now and it's just um yeah so everything is like hopefully one foot in front of the other and i'm getting my groove back onto youtube but i just really wanted to come back today and talk to you guys and a say thank you b say thank you and C, say, um, I'm going to keep on, keep on keeping on, you know, and um, put one foot in front of the other and, and uh, do the best that I can do, you know, and try to live the best life that I possibly can. And, um, you know, I'm very, very grateful for the life that I have. Um, and uh, I'm very, very grateful for all of you. And I love you guys. And I will see you tomorrow with a trauma video. Bye.